we're back this afternoon for the final session of this bootstrap workshop on um, March 26, 1972. 1992. <laughs> 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 to move up here. <laughs> Before we. Before we begin, we want to briefly introduce the new people who have joined us for uh, this afternoon's session. And why don't we start with uh, Marcelo over here in the far end. Please pick up your mics, if you will, and very briefly uh, who you are and, and what your connection is to the bootstrap. Hello, my name is Marcelo Hoffman. I'm with SRI International. Um, work there as an industry analyst in the Business Intelligence Center. and. We're doing a major study on groupware and group technologies that support the work that are equivalent to the work that Doug has done. And sorry for my voice. Hello, uh, I'm Earl Craig Hill from SRI International also. I'm in the engineering group. Uh, we're uh, actually trying to uh, begin to evolve a new program in collaboration technologies. and to develop some support capabilities that, uh, that Doug, Doug has pioneered and, and, and put forth. And, and we're trying to apply those to some real world problems right now, both in, uh, in concurrent engineering to do VLSI design and in distance learning to provide, provide new ways of, provide of, uh, of es uh, educational delivery in, in uh, industrial workplaces. Thank you. My name is Jeffrey Wildfogel, and I uh, teach part-time here at Stanford. I teach a course called The Psychology of Peak Performance, and I have my own company, The Mental Edge, and I guess I represent the C community. Uh, I do what I call achievement coaching, and actually through uh, the seminar uh, a year ago, made some contacts with people and, and going to begin some projects on coaching ma general managers on managers how to be coaches. Keith. I'm uh, Keith Joseph. I work at Pacific Bell in a department called uh, Advanced Products and Services. I'm currently working on a project called the, uh, the Knowledge Network Project at Pacific Bell, which is uh, concerned with uh, delivery of um, interactive multimedia over a broadband network. I am Prasad Kaipa. I do research on how organizations learn and how people learn and where and how technology can facilitate learning and especially in the arena of uh, I work quite a bit on the attitude shift and paradigm shifts and how we can actually bring about those changes in people and bring breakthroughs in uh, uh, people's thinking. That's where I focus on a lot more both on organizational level at individual level. I'm Ade Mabukunje. I'm here at Stanford at the Center for Design Research. My area of focus is in product development performance, and the basic thesis we're working on is that if these tools are very useful, we should be able to develop here teams of students that will compete effectively with engineers in industry. And that's what we're trying to find out um, as part of the research area. Um, the, well, that, the, my connection with Doug is um, when I started my research about three years ago, I discovered a lot of the basic computer support tools we needed um, to try out. Um, he had already prototyped some of them. So next um, fall, we're starting up a lab. And the aim is just to see, okay, can we compete student teams whom we coach with other engineers working in industry such that over time, they can outperform them. We do expect that the first time around the engineers from industry will boot the students, but that through continuous improvement, we may be able to get a better performance from our students. Well, I hope you all have a chance to meet and interact with uh, some of our guests over our breaks. But right now, we have a, a uh, rather he heavy program to move through in order to get, out, get you out on time. So, Doug, why don't you take over. I'll cover a little bit more in section J, but first I want to tell you about the assignments that you're going to have for the afternoon. 
so that you can sort of put that assignment hat on your head when you're listening to the rest of this because that's how I'm going to deliver it. <coughs> so if you can switch to the computer video, please. <coughs> <coughs> So anyway, we, um, what we're going to do is break you up into groups, three groups, and make assignments. So just to sort of get oriented about the groups right away, here's, here's your assignment to groups. So you can take a look at that and find out what you're at, and we'll come back to that a little bit later to sort of say which group you're in right now if you wish, but we'll leave this on the screen later so everybody can do it. What I'd like to do is go back and say, okay, assume you're in one of the three groups, so what? See? So, this is what I'm saying. You're, we're going we're to break you out in 15 or 20 minutes like that, and you have through the end of this session and up till 3.30, if you wish, when we start the final session of the day, to do your group work. <coughs> and Christine has arranged that across the big building over there with the veranda in which we ate lunch yesterday. There's a big conference room right behind that with nice big round tables. And they're letting us use that, um, that space in there to each group. Can, there are only eight or nine people in a group. You can commandeer a table. You can even take it out in the veranda if you want to. So you can spend time together at a table talking. So then what do you do? <coughs> so anyway. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Um, <coughs> so, um, so anyway, that, that saves you time. And what, what you're going to do is develop a proposal for launching a bootstrap initiative in some existing organization. So the chances are that we, we try to get it so that um, within each group, there are one or two people from large enough organizations that could be a real candidate. For, for that organization that you could say, all right, we're going to start this initiative in there. So what your group's supposed to do is prepare a plan that you're going to present to an executive board starting at 3.30. And so one of the things your group has to do is, is elect a presenter to that executive board. And another thing you have to do is pick a tip rep good representative that's going to come out of your board and sit out of your group and sit on that board. <coughs> so, <coughs> you have a presenter who's going to, is going to sort of present your group and the group can back him up and argue with him, but one guy's voice ma mainly is going to tell the story. <coughs> so you pick a presenter and you pick an executive liaison person who's going to be sitting up here listening. Um, so we'll have at least three people sitting up here listening. That they're supposed to have a hat on that says, I'm representing the executive structure in whatever group you really think you're trying to sell. And we're going to ask that kind of question and we want you to tell us sort of why we should buy what you're planning. <coughs> so you make a good case for it. So during, during the time you're out there, <coughs> Margaret and I and Christina can be circulating and answering questions if there are any that you have. And in each group we've got, we try to put a mix of the kind of visiting groups. So some of our alumni who make good consultants are scattered <coughs> among, among your groups. And uh, so that's what you're going to be doing. And so you can sort of ask, well, what, what kinds of things would be in that plan? Well, for one thing, it's like saying, well, what do you, what do you want to do first? And how do you justify it? And if you're going to start talking about a C community, well, who's going to be it and what are they going to do? And why would that be a value? So we'll be wandering around to say, well, if you've got some fundamental questions about what we've been saying, ask us. <coughs> but just see what you can do. So then we'll see during the presentations, we'd sort of like say take 15 minutes from each group to make a presentation. And that'll probably take an hour and a half for three groups, but we'll <laughs> try to, but we'd like to preserve at least half an hour at the end for another kind of wrap up. So there'd be sort of like an hour of the last session we'd be using for this kind of open going. So I, from our past experience, that'll, that'll generate 
a lot of really good questions that may not have come up during the time and lots of interaction among you to generate all that. <coughs> so <coughs> let me just take take the next half hour between now and two. <coughs> and um, what I like is just <laughs> that we're augmented. <coughs> um, let me do you a favor. <laughs> so, so one of the things that you can do it ref for reference when you're when you're cogitating and arguing is look through section J because there are a number of things in here that um, sort of have been thought through. In J6, the initial launch steps we sort of outline. You can just check those out or revise them entirely, but it's a framework you can sort of hang on and ask questions about. The content from J7 are also there for reference to say, okay, that's that was what was planned for one kind of community being launched. J8, general approach. So it's assuming that the main main plan would be here's the framework for a strategy and here's a phase one plan in which we, we assume that after phase one you could generate and, and justify more explicit follow-on phases with the general approach. <coughs> so in J9, deliverables. In J10, multi-year follow-on. So these are these are things that were thought through, and you and you'll find in what is it section L that's got the draft plan that we generated. L. So Christina is the one that worked most of the detail in that. By the way, everybody, officially this is Christina. <laughs> curtsy. I thought we taught you to curtsy. <laughs> no, Dave. Um, but anyway, one thing that my kids always suffered from is a father that didn't sort of enjoy embarrassing them in public. So it's, it's great training for them, I always assumed. <coughs> yes. <coughs> so anyway, and so some of the, the the things in J11, J12, we already talked about. Questions like J13 is our, our planning and budgeting questions. You know, what size and importance for the target applications of direct improvement? So you can just say direct improvement period if you want to, but the strategy says, you know, the principal basis of that is saying early on to go after the Kodiak for improving will have a lot of strategic value. So that's why we keep dropping Kodiak in there. And in J14, we start talking about, you know, yes, Kodiak's important and it does a lot of, it's good experience to go after some special area. But the, the real sense is to appreciate that the likelihood is there's a very large common domain of Kodiak capability that is essentially the same in, in generic nature for every discipline. And one of the things to watch out for is people rushing into special domains. There should be generic for all of them and doing them in some specialized way that are just fitting for that particular kind of application that won't be interoperable conceptually or, or vocabulary-wise or, or functionally-wise and the others. So the orientation about the relative size is there. <coughs> and then some of the things about as the community were to grow, like in J16, J17, J18 and on, is look at the, the different ways in which that community can involve other people. And special research by university groups or other R&D can cycle right back into improving the actual operational function capability of the C community or come into the actual knowledge and stuff like that. So you could buy or rent 
specialist to help you fill your intelligence collection. Or over here you could get coaches and things that would help you really improve your capability <coughs> and rent, bring them in from the outside. So that that's, that's a kind of a thing that a maturing C community would really appreciate. <coughs> Another one is to say, well, you know, here's, this can represent many organizations out here in which you say, well, look, if you find, you get a generic, I guess we should say that along here someplace in a matured C community, I've been telling everybody all the time that it seems essentially inevitable to me that before long within any one organization that you'd start communicating with ally, uh, ally, allies, <laughs> other organizations, and soon you'd bond, they'd be very valuable to start actual participatory activity between them, and pretty soon there'd be de facto community that spreads among organizations. And then the ways in which different classes of organizations could participate. And the J-17, you could almost say, it doesn't have to be a university up there, but the with any large organization, you probably would have a subordinate C community that, in fact, would be an active member of a larger one. So these are just, these don't have to be in your plans or something, but I'm just trying to round out how the, how the perceptions grew in the last few years about how these kind of collective communities would really work. So in J18, we just talked generally about special interest communities that are out there in the world. <coughs> for instance, a Stanford group that had a center for organizational design <coughs> organized a consortium, a university consortium of other centers interested in organizational design. So I, they don't seem to have really starting to augment it like we're talking about, but there is no reason at all why existing communities like that can't be tied in and they'd each need to sort of retain some kind of B activity that could really take to boosting their capability if they didn't already, weren't already organized like that. So the room for sort of floating or consulting organizations that say, I will bring B service into your community if you're not structured so that your own membership can really do it very well. So many, many special pr purpose communities could do that. For instance, the standards groups that are out there where the participants out in here really aren't funded and involved to the point where they, they can really have their own bees, etc. So, but a standards group that has members from another organization could, could buy bee service from here that would help supply it with equipment and training so it could boost its capability. And then be it, that's an important kind of distributed community for the C community to want to be able to learn how to, to provide support for. <coughs> So that these are downstream enrichments and, and, and don't, don't feel you have to try to include these particularly in these next hour, but I just, I just want to sort of paint the picture in general that how the, how the perception or planning for the kind of a C community can evolve to, to extend a great deal of use. <coughs> so in J21, and just obviously pointing out that there are some kinds of special interest communities out there <coughs> whose, whose product is things that could be plowed back in to improve the capabilities of, <coughs> of produce the output of the C community. <coughs> so you get extra, extra payoff by that. <coughs> so you, after you guys have formed your C community for a year or something, you can start scouting to say, now we're active enough, we know enough how we could, we could provide support for a bee that was this whole supporting a distributed community of special interest. Let's look around and pick some of those that, whose output would really be very beneficial to us. So that's a maturing kind of thing. Then the 22, it's pointing out that there are the very high, high capacity computing and networking initiatives that have been started in the last couple years 
I've started out with sort of the motivation of being able to serve some of the what they call grand challenges of our nation. You know, the human genome problem and weather prediction and things of that sort. So there's isolated just as a matter of of involvement in this planning, these grand challenges. And he says, well, hell, anybody that's really trying to improve a grand challenge thing is really a B and we ought to be able to start registering and supporting them. And from where you come from, Sid, their involvement in a number of things like that, that just says, hey, boy, you've got larger scope C's going, etc. So these are, these are downstream. There's a, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of potential. So what I'm going to be very much interested in now, I've done all the easy work, you guys. <coughs> so it's going to be very interesting to see what you do. And Margaret will be sort of your your orchestrator. And Christine and I and Margaret support you. Are we missing anything else? We see you back here at 3.30 ready to report. Right. Uh, this is not highly structured. Uh, we're going to, we, we, the intelligence is scattered throughout the groups, and so we want you to be able to draw on the uh, energies and intelligence of, of the groups to decide how you proceed, and we'll give you that hour and a half. As Doug said, there is a space across the, the way where you can sit um, around tables, which will be more conducive to, uh, to working together. Um, I might suggest that the, uh, the person who is the presenter really be the person you consider the champion of, of this in your uh, organization and uh, the uh, person who sits up here uh, be an executive sponsor. Um, anyway, I, th I would like to challenge you to, uh, you know, fill in the blanks, just make this a productive process for, for those of you who, who are working together. Uh, tap into the resources of some of the people who are visiting us but uh, mostly I've been impressed with the, the deep resources that we have among all of you who are here. So without uh, any other, uh, at about 3 o'clock there will be some food so people can take a break and, and uh, talk or continue, whatever you would like. So they will have a reward in another hour. <laughs> Meanwhile, I will stop by to see that you all get started in about five mm -hmm. minutes. Has anybody missed in here? Jim, where are you? I'm not here. I was going to be one of those. Yes. He was supposed to.